uh, back here in uh, Sioux City at Borrego Park. Uh, we're waiting for the uh, arrival of uh, seven young relatives from the Rosebud Reservation coming home from Carlisle. Uh, they plan to um, keep the children in the teepee here and they've set up uh, uh, seven spots for them around a fire inside the teepee. Uh, they have stuffed animals in there as well. And um, they just uh, finished saying a prayer and uh, singing some songs here, some honoring and prayer songs for the relatives. And we're about to have a meal. Um, but it does look like the, uh, the relatives are about three hours late and uh, probably won't arrive for about another three hours tonight. But I'm gonna stick around and uh, we'll check back in a little later, but I am gonna let this video run for a bit. Thank you for joining me. Here for a moment. Hey, what's up? Hi. <laughs> Good to see you. Hey, 
you doing? Good, good, good. Oh, oh that's <laughs> Ava. She had to get in there. <laughs> yeah, what, oh, I thought you were doing it. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, no, I was just kind of eavesdropping here. No, you're fine. <laughs> okay, okay so I'm going to get out of there. They called. They called my aunt Joyce. And they said that a, a mother, a woman that has had a child, the one is supposed to prepare foods, cook spare foods for kids. So I didn't know that for the rose bush. Why not? 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 Oh, she's in the green? I mean, she's in the orange shirt sitting yeah. down? In the yes. ribbons? In the very back. Yeah, let me go get her. I'll go okay. get her. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Uh, if we could start with your name, say it, spell it. Sikawis, S-I-K-O-W-I-S, Nobis, N-O-B-I-S-S. And what is your involvement with tonight's event? Uh, my involvement with tonight's event um, comes from a place of mourning, actually. I'm First Nations. Uh, I'm Plains Cree Salto of the George Gordon First Nation. Uh, and my nation uh, actually has the longest running residential school in Canada, uh, which, with, with its very terrible reputation. So even people from my own generation attended that school. And so what's happening tonight uh, is because we would obviously be honoring these children as they come through from Carlisle Indian School, but because of the um, extreme amount of mourning and grief and trauma that Indigenous communities are feeling across Turtle Island right now, this event is uh, very meaningful at the moment. Uh, not that it wouldn't be meaningful uh, regardless, but that a lot of people are feeling just so much hurt and pain right now that this is a place and time for us to come together uh, and heal and welcome uh, these relatives through that never made it home from uh, what they call boarding school here and residential school in Canada back to their homeland so their relatives can take care of their remains and they can uh, be in the place that they're supposed to be. And so um, as an organizer, uh, you know, we heard about this event and we wanted to, to do something, and so we've been working pretty steadily for a week and a half uh, to make this happen. But I'm one of many people. There's many other people here that were part of this, and uh, it's important that this uh, be seen as a community event, and that people came together and everybody had something to offer to make this a success. That's all I really want to say. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So you, oh. you guys reached out to them because they weren't originally going to yes. stop long Yeah, Yeah, so I, Trish can answer that part. Though. Okay. Yeah, I Trish. think Trish should be great for that aspect of it. I don't want to, like, I just want bits. I want all of everybody to be in here. Come on, Trish. <laughs> okay, uh, you could start with your name, say it, spell uh, it. Trisha Ettringer, T R I S H A. Uh, Ettringer is E T R I N G E R. And what was your, your role with you know, bringing this here to me? My role here was just to uh, kind of communicate between Vicki Eagle Bear, who was part of the caravan, and then uh, uh, collaborate with all the organizers here. Uh, and basically, uh, we had received word that the Suchambu relatives were passing through, and so we wanted to do something. Um, you know, we with the recent unearthing of, of our children's bodies uh, coming up, we knew that that was always there. Um, but 
now we have to um, we have to treat it with respect and a lot of First Nations are going through emotional emotional uh, trauma here and this isn't just uh, you know this wasn't in uh, this wasn't how do I read this 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 has been always going on um, hold on guys let me <laughs> This has been a part of our history, and with uh, with recent critical race theory, of, you know, the past uh, with legislation, uh, we feel that this is kind of unfair to us because this is this is our history, and it's not it's not you know decades, it's not you know um, earth centuries. This wasn't long ago, or it was it. The history, um, I'm, I'm kind of having a hard time here. <clears throat> the history, um, the history or the truth will always come out. Um, so regardless of uh, critical race theory, uh, this, this is going to come up and this is all the reason for, you know, us to, to bring our stories, uh, stories to the forefront. So um, it was just, uh, you know, a helping hand in the process, and there are so many people that uh, helped in making this happen, and we can't wait um, to welcome the Siachambu relatives here on our events. Yeah, no, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Anything else to say mm. I think um, one 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 important thing is that you know this isn't uh, just here in the United States. This also happened in Canada, and um, we just need to be there for each other through these uh, hard times. And this is just uh, one example of how we could do that. Uh, so yeah, I think that's that's all I got. Okay. <laughs> so. Trish, um, sorry, one more question. Yeah, for sure. Um, do, you, do you know anybody who's in a boarding school? Are we related to anybody in a boarding school? I think uh, my grandparents uh, passed when I was younger, um, but I do believe that they went to Genoa Indian boarding school. So there is history of our of our bloodline, you know, going through that, that boarding school era. So um, I was unfortunate to not be able to hear those stories, but at the same time, you know, that's something that, that you know, could have really, um, really been emotional. It is, it's already emotional as is, but, um, you know, it's, it's something that our family hasn't discovered yet or hasn't talked about. Um, but, you know, with everything that's going on, I'm sure that it will be something, so. Okay. Um, is Sunrise? She just wants to put it on the phone. Okay. <clears throat> I think some girls will have a lot more to me. Maybe Anthony. Anthony. Yeah, Anthony. Oh, go ahead. Oh, there you go. Oh, you might. Okay. <laughs> Get all that. <clears throat> okay, if you want, look here. Okay. Um, we're going to start with your name, say it, spell it. You can go whenever. Ready? Yep. All right. Meti Mepto, Shawanoki, Lanawaki, Oklahoma, Shikanju, Anthony Warrior, A N T H O N Y W A R R I O R. My involvement with this event this evening uh, was I was honored by the uh, Great Plains Action Society to be able to prepare a uh, traditional meal. My, uh, by trade, I'm a trained chef, and I've uh, been able to travel the country and have heard 
of these events that have gone on through the years and the seeing firsthand uh, a lot of the atrocities of the boarding schools in the Canadian provinces all the way down into the Oklahoma territories. And the honor that was bestowed upon me this evening was to prepare meals and soups that are known to our ancestors and to our people to be able to make that connection with those that have gone to the other side and to be able to offer those blessings to each and every one of these children uh, that we're going to be continue to uh, find, locate, and possibly get them back to their families. Uh, my mother's side is uh, Sikanju, and uh, she went through the list of names, and one of the names on there is actually uh, one of our part of our family names. So our traditional family name is the Pino uh, from Melvin Pino, who is my grandfather. And being able to be a part of this has been fantastic, and uh, just the thoughts and prayers that go out to all these people that are along this journey just giving that little bit of sustenance and a connection to uh, spiritual holistic health through the food is uh, kind of what I uh, empower and, and want to do for uh, these communities. So it's been a great honor and I, I really appreciate them asking me to be a part of this uh, and those blessings that I've offered while I was cooking. I send that out to everyone in this area and give them an understanding that we're still here, we're still proud and we still have a place in this in this society so food is the tie to a lot of that and to a lot of our people so that's been my blessing um, there is a little quick story one of the the, the meat that was uh, provided tonight is the uh, bison and it was actually uh, a bison kill that came from rosebud and it was a young man that helped divide that that meat up that we used this evening and Manapi and his uh, his uh, group had donated that uh, meat from that kill so the connection of bringing that actually as a, as a young man providing that meat and that kill to bring it back here for me to prepare it for these children that are coming home is kind of a good intercept point and to be able to make that relationship that this uh, meal that we're preparing is connected in that way to those uh, Sikanju and Rosebud people. So again, thank you for the blessings of that. Uh, what does it mean to you to be kind of involved in helping, you know, get these children back home. Yeah, these, these children, um, as they spoke earlier, going to these places, uh, not by choice, um, but, you know, having to be able to uh, adapt to the society in the only way they thought that was necessary. These families unwillingly gave up their children. For me, uh, having this opportunity to be able to travel around this country to see what has happened to a lot of these families in the past with their children, uh, being taken and sent off to these these uh, boarding schools, uh, including where I just came from, up at Akwesasne, that seeing the connection and the feelings of the people that actually survived that. Uh, to me, that's the link that I have inside of me to be able to provide this comfort of being able to feed, to be able to find that connection back with them again. That is my involvement with this, and I'm, I'm very honored to be a part of that. Anything else you would like to add? I just want to send all the blessings and prayers to all these people. My mother is sitting at home. She wanted to be here. My uh, Aunt Joyce Pino, she's up in uh, Rosebud right now, and um, she's one of the actual uh, people that had connection to some of those people that actually lost their loved ones and kind of heard these stories. So I hope this brings a little bit of closure and my little bit of offering to that for the Pino side family and all the other Sikandras. I, I leave with that, so that's where I want to leave my blessings and my heartfelt uh, uh, offerings to them. Okay. Right, we're going to cut it off here for a bit. We'll be back shortly. <laughs>